I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to take you through how I go about creating uh, graphics and specifically quotes for things like tumblers um, and different laser engraving projects or even like Cricut projects for my wife. So um, I am by no means an expert, uh, but I thought I'd share how I do it, see if it might um, create some creativity for others or, or just tips and tricks, etc. And if, if you see me doing something that is not the most efficient way of doing it and there's a better way to accomplish it, please leave me a comment. Let me know uh, your thoughts. So let's get started. I use Adobe Illustrator. Um, and you can use any um, application you want, Canva or um, all kinds of different free ones. So I use this because I have a Adobe account, but I usually create a 500 by 500 millimeter uh, piece of artwork or uh, artboard to start. Doesn't really matter how it how uh, um, how big it is because I'm, I'm going to do everything in vector, so you can scale up and scale down and do whatever you need to do. So. Um, where we get started. So I want to do a Simon Sinek quote. Um, be the leader wish you had. And we'll just do that. Hold the shift key down while you size and it'll do it proportion. Proportionate? Is that a word? Um, so first thing I do is I, I create it. Do I want uppercase, lowercase? Um, I think we're, I think we're good with this. Uh, then next thing I do is I figure out my font and one that is pretty good for, um, these kinds of projects. I always like a, uh, a script of some kind. I like this Calgary script. So I select that. Again, we'll just make it a little bit bigger. Um, and in order for it to engrave smooth and make sure you're you're getting a good project out of it is I like to break it up away from it being a font and into um, an outline essentially so I'm going to create come down here in the lower right hand corner create outlines and you see now everything is an individual uh, item so to speak so I'm going to ungroup this and I'm going to zoom in and that's on a Mac command plus to zoom in. And you see that when I move my mouse over, get these little purpley lines around it. So I want to make this one piece of artwork or, or image, so to speak. So I'm going to select them all. I'm going to come over here to the Pathfinder area and I'm going to say Unite. Okay, so now that thing is one piece. It's all tied together. You don't need to group it because it's one thing. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these two because they're touching. Um, the Y is not touching these, so I'm going to select all three of these and group them so I can deal with them all as one item. Uh, it looks like the I and the S are touching, so I'm going to unite those. And then I'm going to group Wish, so it's one item. And then just rinse and repeat, so to speak. And I'm sure there's keyboard shortcuts that I am not using that would be much faster. Um, looks like all of these are touching, so we'll just unite those. No need to group. Same thing with the. Item. And the B and the E are not touching, so we will group those. Okay. Now I basically have everything the way I want. Now I need to figure out how I want to, you know, size the individual words or uh, lay them out. Um, and I think these three should be one line. So we'll just make those a little bit bigger. And then we'll say these four. This is where you got to get creative. Um, not really sure what I want to do with this one. I think I want to accentuate the word leader. So I'll make that one a little bit bigger. Kind of move that in the, vertically in the center. Let's say you wish. A little bit smaller maybe.
Yeah, I'm not really liking that at all. We're going to change paths here. I'm make leader really accentuated. See if we can something like this, possibly. See how that looks. Sorry, I had the sniffles a little bit. And maybe accentuate had a little bit. We'll sit back and look at that using my uh, arrow keys to kind of nudge them little by little. Okay, that's not terrible. So, save it. Always save, 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 save. You don't want to do a bunch of work and then lose it because of a power outage or who knows what. So, all right. So have the basic layout that, that you like. Um, so then what you need to do is what I do. I create another layer. I copy this and it's on a Mac. It's command A to select all, command C to copy, go over to layer two. And then I want to paste in place. That way it's in the exact same spot. Um, that way I know I don't have to maneuver it around later. So, and for now, I'm going to hide that. I'm going to go back to this first layer. I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to say object, path, offset path. This is where you get that cool kind of bubbly look, so to speak. So um, I'm going to say offsets by millimeter. My room is two. This is fine. You can play around with these settings all you want. So... Okay, so how to how to see what this might look like? I'm gonna turn that layer off. I'm gonna turn this layer back on. I'm gonna make select all again, Command A, and I'm gonna fill it with white just so you can see it on top of the black outline. And then I have my layers upside down, so I'll put that. So that's what it could look like on a let's say a a cup where the white and I'm gonna reverse all this, but it, the white would be the silver of the tumbler. And the black would be whatever color of the paint or um, uh, powder coat that is on the tumbler. So this kind of gives you a good idea of, of what it could look like. And on some, sometimes I take it even a step further. So I'm going to hide that first layer. I'm going to, again, make another layer. Put it behind that first one. I'm going to select everything in that, in all the black. I'm going to go to the third layer. I'm going to paste in place again. That way I've got the, an exact copy. Okay, so I'm going, to, I'm going to hide that layer. Go back to this layer. I'm going to select all again. I'm going to say object, path, offset path again. Same settings. Okay. So this is where I'm going to reverse everything so you see what it could look like when, it, when it's... Uh, actually engraved. So the, the very back layer, the bottom layer will be burned off the paint. The paint will be burned off. So I'm going to leave it black. I'm going to move it down. This middle layer is what's going to be left. So I'm going to make it white so you can see it. So now you're starting to get the visual. And then that top layer again, I'm going to make it black so you can see how this whole thing could look when it's done. I'll turn all the layers back on. So anything black will be burned or engraved and be the color of the tumbler underneath. Anything white will be what is left. So you can see this is what it would look like on your tumbler. Fairly easy to do. I typically take it a step further than this, though. 
I'm going to hide that top layer because it's basically ready to go. don't need to do anything else with that. I'm going to hide the bottom layer. So I'm, I'm going to select all. I'm going to make this black again, just or actually I'll just make it yellow just so it's easier to understand. I want to get rid of all of the little white spots here to kind of make it one smooth um, burn, let's say. So I'm just going to take a, a rectangle. And I go through here like this, cover up all those spots. Right, so then that's what it looks like. So then I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to select everything I want to combine. I'm going to say Unite. So I got rid of all those little white spots. I want to do that here as well. So, uh, little yellow box. Select all that. Unite it all. Now the question is, do you get rid of these? I think these are big enough that they'll look kind of cool leaving them alone, so we won't. But as you see, when I mouse over the areas that I haven't united, you still have that underlying text. So I'm just going to select all that, unite it, select each one of these little sections, unite them. So they're just one item. And since these are all touching, I can make this all one item. And I can make these two one item so unite okay all right so this is going to be a white layer I will change back to white actually select it all okay. and then turn on that bottom layer and there's still a couple of little spots that I need to deal with. So, you notice those. Let's turn it back to yellow just so you can see them. There's two little spots right there that need dealt with. I know these nitpicking stuff, but. Two little yellow boxes. Unite all of this again. Okay. So, now I'll turn it white again. Turn on that black one. So that's what it's going to look like. So now we're going to do basically same thing with the black. We're going to unite everything. Since they're all touching, we're going to unite it all. The question is, this little white spot, what does that look, look like with the yellow on top? Okay, perfect. You want the text? Yep, okay. So that looks good. All right, so to simplify it even further, instead of having this white layer and this black layer, now that I've got everything cleaned up, I'm just going to select both of those, and I'm going to unite those. That didn't work. That's not what I want to do. I want to click the minus front. I want to remove the white from the black. There. So, so now this, I click here, there's nothing to select because it's just, there's nothing there. Now all you have is this black outline, essentially. So, in essence, I could kill this layer. And I have two layers. I have the words, and then what would be essentially the background. So to add a little cool factor, I want to also add Simon Sinek's signature. So I downloaded one off the internet. It wasn't great, I had to do a little cleaning up, but essentially this is what I came up with. So I'm just going to copy that from a different Illustrator file, paste it in here resize it so it fits what I'm trying to accomplish. Maybe move it over here like so. Maybe a little bigger. Something like that. Okay. All right. Well, I'm happy with that. So that's all for the Illustrator portion of this. So um, next up will be importing it into Lightburn. Okay, so now it's time to play in Lightburn. Um, I've got obviously Lightburn open, so I'm going to import my Adobe Illustrator image. Save it on the desktop. Okay, that looks pretty good. I know that I want this to be around 60 millimeters wide, so I'm gonna go ahead and just change it now. And I know the orientation that I'm gonna need it based on how my Tumblr is set up in my X tool. 
is I want it to be 90 degrees. Let's flip it like that. Let me just zoom in here a little bit. Okay. So I want this to be a fill on a tumbler. So I already know I've got that set up here on the blue zero one color. And it is essentially 70 millimeters per second at a 100% power. Um, nothing crazy, no complex settings. I, I have pretty good luck with these using those settings. So I'll save that. I'm going to do the preview to see if it looks like what I'm hoping it's going to turn out as. And it does appear to be what I want. So I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. I'm going to make sure that my enable rotary is set here as well. Um, see if I'm connected to my X tool, which it does, uh, it does appear I am, which is good. So, okay, we're going to pause this real quick, go set up the rotary, and I'll be back. All right, so we're inside the enclosure, and I said I wanted it 60 millimeters wide, so I'm measuring it from that center white line there, trying to get a gauge on how big it'll be on the tumbler itself. So I think 60 is okay. And you can see that's the center of the line based on an, a logo on the other side. Um, so I want to line it up there so it's on the reverse side, essentially. Um, so not really sure how high I want this to go. Um, so if I'm 60 wide, it's about 40-ish tall, something like that. So I'm kind of getting a gauge on exactly where I want to place this logo. Um, and really it's preference. And uh, do you like it in the middle? Do you like it a little higher? What, what's, you know, what's your preference that you want to, you want to see on your tumbler? So it really isn't that big of a deal. It's where you want it on yours. So I'm going to nudge this up just a hair and uh, I think we'll call it good there. All right, so we'll go back to light burn at this point. Everything has been double checked. The enable rotary is double checked. The type of fill I want to do is double checked. Um, so now really all we're, it's time to uh, hit the start button and see what happens. Okay, so here's the uh, finished product. Um, can I can tell this lighting and whatnot, but it turned out really nice if you ask me. Probably a little low placement wise, but even detail wise, even the, even the signature turned out pretty good. So, yeah, so anyway. That's kind of start to finish. Um, oh, by the way, I used that LA's Awesome spray from like the dollar store and a magic eraser underwater and it takes all the soot and grime off really nice. So that stuff's super cheap and works fantastic. So that's how I would finish it if I was you. But um, that's start to finish from Adobe Illustrator through Lightbird through the Xtool D1. So I'm using the new rotary. Anyway, any questions, any comments, any thoughts? Uh, a better way to do it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks. Oh, and don't forget, if you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.